Hey, it's Apostle Dwayne. Uh, welcome to Manifesting the Mind of Christ. I would call it Manifesting the Mind of Mashiach, but nobody would know what that is. So uh, it's my job to tell them. But, um, but welcome to today's uh, message. And the message today is, why is the devil or why does the devil hate people? And why, why is he jealous of man? Okay. Um, well, first of all, you may not know that he's jealous of man. You may not know that he hates people, but I'm here to tell you he does. And I'm going to show you why. Excuse me. I'm going to show you why. And I'm also going to get into the subject of the, uh, of what this show is called when I when I say manifesting the mind of Christ. OK, uh, this is very, very, very critical that you know this information. Uh, because it really what I'm going to tell you now is revolutionary um, in that. It, um, it first of all, it's not known very much by most people and is not very well understood for those that do know it. And so I'm going to share with you some revelation today that may, that, that should, um, you know, just transform your walk okay and i'm also going to give you some pretty good proof of what i'm saying um hold on one second here oops all right so let me go ahead and get into the verses here All right. So the first place I'm going to go to is let's go back to the beginning. Now, yesterday, yesterday I went to, um, I was reading uh, on Bible study. I was reading from Genesis chapter one, and I was showing you the creation from the beginning. Now, I didn't get. I only read the first half of the of the of the description of of the creation, or the you know from the opening chapter of Genesis. But I'm going to go ahead now, and I'm going to uh, we're going to talk about the end of that chapter or just part of it. And right here, in Genesis chapter one, verse twenty six, God said, and God said, "Let us make man." in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image and the image God created him, male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. OK, so that's Genesis one, verse 26 to 28. So Genesis was written by Moses. It was dictated by God, but it was written down by Moses. But what you have to understand is Genesis wasn't written at the beginning of the creation of the world. It was written a long time after because there had already been a pre-flood civilization that had been wiped out by the flood where God restarted the earth with Noah and his family. And so the telling of Genesis, when you're reading Genesis, it's kind of like when you're watching, let's say uh, you're a movie person, if you watch Star Wars, 
Well, the original Star Wars movie starts out in like the middle of the series. But then they went back and told the prequels how it got to that point. Well, in in this in Genesis, the, the Genesis was written thousands, you know, who knows how many thousand years Earth was old at the time that Genesis was written, but when it was written, it took into it, it took into account everything that happened before it. Okay, so when Moses, when God told Moses here, write this down, it was given to him, you know, what everything that happened from the beginning. And one of the things that uh, just a, a side note. And so but there was books that were written before Genesis, uh, before the Tanakh, the, the, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. Um, and one of them is Enoch. Enoch was written pre-flood. You can believe that or not, but man had the ability to write from the beginning because Adam wasn't stupid. You know, we you, you have been told that we came from um, um, cave people, cavemen, Neanderthals, that we that we that we started out as a tadpole. And after a million years, that morphed into a. Um, a frog and then that turned into a monkey and then uh from there you know uh you know the monkey lost his legs or, i mean i mean and then we became people i mean some some poppycock that cannot be proven by any stretch of the imagination for a something to leap from a tadpole to a frog is fine because that's how frogs are made but to go from a frog to a person or to a reptile to a human and the reptile brain and all this other stuff that that, that they're feeding you it 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 first of all it 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 does not line up with what you see in society everything according to genesis was re, was designed with the ability to reproduce after its own kind it was it was the the seed was put into the the fruit when it was designed so that the the seed would automatically reproduce the same fruit the same thing with people the seed was put in the man or actually, uh, when he first created him, he had everything. But when he separated a woman out, he put the, the seed in the man and the ovaries in the woman. That's why you can't, you can, you can want to change your 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 sex all day. But the fact of the matter is, you're born with one set of organs or the other. That determines who you are. Okay, and um, regardless of what you want to say and change your appearance to be on the outside, you can't change your inside. Now you can get all these chemicals and things and and hormones that mess your system up, but you're not actually changing anything. All you're doing is changing the covers, like changing your clothes, you know. Um, but anyway, and so right here it said so in Genesis one twenty seven it says so God created man in His own image, and in His likeness. So image means you look like. Likeness means you have the same qualities as. All right, so just put that little thing in, in the back of your mind. Now, let me go here to um, some, let's go here to some, Psalm eight, Psalm eight, Verse five, it says, or actually, let me see here. I'll start at eight, four and read five. I'll read, I'll read eight, I'll read Psalm eight, four through six. What is man? This is someone talking to God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? The son of man that thou should, that thou visitest him. This is talking to God. I mean, who is man that you even show up to see us? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him have dominion over the works of thy hands and thou hast put all things under his feet. And if you keep going on, it keeps talking about all the things he's put under his feet, just like back in Genesis. I just read this for you, right? Uh, all the sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field. Uh, verse eight, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea and whatsoever passes through the pass of the seas. Okay. And so, so in Genesis, here Moses said, you know, man has dominion over all these things. And guess what? We do. 
There's no one on top of us, not in the natural state. And then right here in verse, verse 5, it says, For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and crowned him with glory. Well, let's look at that. So you remember uh, in the broadcast yesterday in Bible study, I was telling you that when you read the, the Bible that we have now in English, you're reading a translation from another language. Well, the other language, the other language that the Old Testament was, was written to, the, the actual language of the Old Testament is Hebrew. And so when you go to the Hebrew, right here, it says, the word for the angels there, when you look that up, that's Elohim. And so it says you, you made him a little lower than Elohim, not a little lower than the angels. And when you look up Elohim, Elohim is God. For you made him a little lower than Elohim. Made him a little lower than God. Not a little lower than the angels. Follow me now. I, I don't know if you're catching what I'm saying. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. But let's go to another one. Okay. So... Let's see here. Okay. So I'm going to go somewhere else first. Okay, and I don't want to take too much time. I only have 30 minutes to get this to you, but um, let me go back to Genesis chapter 3. Okay, so Genesis chapter 3. So in Genesis chapter 1, God made man. And in Genesis chapter 2, or, or I'm sorry, in Genesis chapter 1, God made everything. It shows where God made everything. And then in Genesis chapter 2, it talks about the making of, of, of how he went about making Adam. And then also the, the story of how Eve came to be. And then in chapter 3, uh, chapter 3, something happens. Okay. <clears throat> and And really at the end of chapter one, it says, and God saw everything, everything was good. It was all good. So when you have people ask about, you know, well, why did God make the earth bad like it is and wicked and all this other stuff? He actually didn't make it that way. He made it perfect. It was perfect. It worked perfectly, just like the sun rises on time every day, just like the, <clears throat> just like uh, all the systems in the earth work perfect. Gravity works perfect. Uh, I mean, everything, all the laws that he put here, they work perfect. The only thing that wasn't was the moral law and the consequences of that in the earth <clears throat> because God gave man authority. But when he made it, it was perfect. He made it perfect, but he gave people the ability to choose to do good or not, because this is our environment. This, we're the ones who are in charge here and live here. Heaven is perfect. OK, and so but. But so he made it all perfect. And then this happened. Genesis chapter three, verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than the beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, God, yea, hath God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it. Uh, neither shall you touch it lest ye die. Now here she had a misunderstanding. Either. And what Adam said, she didn't catch it right, or maybe she wasn't listening right. But God just said, he didn't say don't touch the tree. He said, just don't eat that fruit from that one tree. But she just said, well, I just, you know, I, I, instead of knowing the specifics on how this works, I, I just won't deal. I, you just deal with it. And left with the understanding that I ah, just don't mess with the tree at all. 
And so because of the lack of understanding there, Satan appealed to her. He didn't come to Adam because it was, it was Adam. It was it was clear. It was clear to Adam. Don't eat that fruit. Real simple. But he appealed to her and he appealed to her uh, in, a, in a sideways, subtle manner. And, and a lot of times uh, women are approached by people who are slick and sly and they know how to appeal to you to tell you what you want to hear. And and rather than you listen to someone who's straight up, you'd rather hear from that that manipulator. It's sad, but that's the truth. OK. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die for God doth know in the day that you eat thereof. Then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her. And he did eat now. OK, and that says he was with her. I, you know, I mean, we don't know where he was in this whole situation, but he should have intervened, but he didn't. OK, and now right here. And in, in, in three five, first he, first the thing the devil did, and 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 because the serpent, this is this is Satan. This is a this is this is literal. It's it, you know a lot of times we think it's a serpent, but it's the way he approached her. You know, God called him a serpent. Could have been a snake. I don't know. Um, but the serpent said unto the woman, "You shall not surely die." So the first thing the devil will do is tell you that the word of God is false, and then he's going to pick some arcane little thing or some little thing to try and use something that where you either don't understand or can't relate to or something and try and use that to underwrite override other stuff that you can easily relate to. And so the first thing he did was he contradicted the word of God. He told her that she wasn't going to die. And then he told her why he, why she should be enti enticed to, to, to um, eat the fruit because for God doth know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. Now here's the funny thing. I just read to you in in chapter one of Genesis when God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. So they were already like God. And then I showed you in, um, in Psalm eight, where it said God made man only a little lower than God. OK, uh, only a little lower than Elohim. So they were already like God. And so, um, but the thing right here is, but there was something that they didn't have. They didn't have knowledge of good and evil. They just had knowledge of what was good. You see, uh, that, you know, because God gave it to them, it was all good. And God said, this is all good. So, so they didn't know good and evil. They did everything they had was just good. It was a good already. Okay. And so. Uh, and he, so he appealed to her to give her something that she didn't have, but she didn't need it or that she didn't need either. OK, and so when they sinned, this is when the fall came. And and the eyes of them were open. This is verse seven. And the eyes of them were both open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves because of the present from the presence of the God among the trees of the garden. And, and so the first thing that happens is whenever you sin, you feel ashamed. You might be tempted to do something and just, it's just driving you. And then when you actually go forward with it and do it, then, uh, then, then afterwards you're going to get the shame because you know, that's not, that wasn't something you were supposed to do. But also what happens is the enemy, he'll, he'll dangle something out in front of you. He'll dangle it, right? He'll put it in your hand. He'll tackle you and, and put it right there. And just when you finally say, okay, then he pulls back. You got to reach for it. You see, he, he's not going to, he's not going to, he can't get, you judge for something that you don't reach for. And just like what happened with him appealing to Eve, she saw that it was appealing to the eye. It was going to taste good. And it was good to make one wise. Once she believed that, once she bought into this is good for me, then she acted. 
That is what's necessary. The devil can't get you judged for anything that you don't desire and 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 grab onto. Okay. And so <clears throat> let me get to um and, and then right here in verse um in verse 12. I'm gonna skip to, to verse actually 11. And, and God said to and, and he said, Who told you that you were naked? This is God speaking to Adam. Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not uh, eat? And the man uh, said, The woman whom thou gavest to me, she gave to me to, of the tree, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all the cattle, and above all every every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shalt thou go, and in dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her, and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and conception, and sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. Thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And to Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all thy days of thy life. Thorns and thistles also shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of every herb of the field. Now, so that's when everything changed. That's when this place went from being perfect to full of trouble. Okay, now. Now, why would Satan get involved to do that, to tempt Adam and Eve? It didn't say they were looking at the tree. He brought it to her attention. He brought the tree to her attention because he knew something. He was trying to give her something that she didn't need because there was a curse that she didn't want. You see, but why did he do that? Why did he do that? You know, uh, and again, the previous um, uh, recording, when I was talking about just truth, I was showing you that uh, one of the uses for receiving bad information is to get you to make bad choices. OK, and so. But why? Why did he get involved with Adam and Eve? Um, oh, uh, let me show you this here before I leave this. I, I do want to make this. Um, ta -ta -ta -ta. OK, in verse in verse 17, when God was speaking to Adam and he said, uh, and the curse is the ground for thy sake and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. In verse 18, he says, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and that uh, thorn and, and, and thou shalt eat every herb of the field. What was the crown that Jesus wore? Thorns. The first mention of thorns is right here in that verse. The first mention of it. Oh, and thistles. Thistles are like tiny thorns, like, you know, like a tree of thorns. Okay. Um, and that was a curse. That was part of the curse. That was part of the curse that, that, that Jesus took on. Okay, oh, I got so much to get to here. All right, so let's go back here. I'm going to go to Isaiah. All right, and Isaiah 14, verse 12, he's speaking. He says, how art thou, how, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou how art thou cut to the ground which did weaken the nations? Okay. Now let me um let me go from before here. Uh, um Okay, all right. Okay, so 
Ah, darn it. All right, so let me just go ahead and start from verse 14, 10, or from, from verse uh, 10, Isaiah 14, 10. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like us unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the to the grave, and and the noise of thy winds, uh, 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 and the noise of thou of thy vials. The worm is sp the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen, O Lucifer? Uh, uh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto the heaven. I will send unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, the, to the sides of the pit. They shall see thee. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the, the man that made the earth to tremble? Did he shake the kingdoms? Um, good morning, Dexter. God bless. Did that did, did that did shake the kingdoms uh, that made the world as wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of the prisoners, uh, all the kings of the nations, even all of them lie glory and glory in their own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, as the raiment of those that are slain, uh, thrust through with a sword. Okay, so what you have to understand is that Satan, before God made Adam, was the highest thing in his creation. You know, he was one of four high angels. I don't want to say he's the highest thing, but he was he was um, a high cherub, and he guarded the throne of God. Uh, when you read the description of him, uh, it says that um, his covering was gold and precious stones, and that uh, and and he and he was in charge of the lights in heaven, and and it said that the pipes and the timbrels, the the the, the musical instruments were put in him. You know, I heard someone teach this. I don't remember who, but it's like he was the lead singer of your whatever favorite rock band you got, or or band, any artist, music artist, or whatever genre. He was the lead singer. He's the band and the light show and. He's a warrior. He's the guard, the uh, the the, uh, the bouncers and 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 the, and the warriors at the same time. I mean, this dude had power and authority, and 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 you know he he was a high angel, but that wasn't enough for him. He wanted to be God, and so God kicked him out of heaven. What he did was in rebellion to God. That was an act of war. God kicked him out, and then he came here. And when God made man in his image and his likeness, Satan was not made in his image and his likeness. When, when Satan and his angels sinned, God just judged them and he said, that you're going to go to hell. I've made a place for you. But man, he didn't do that. For us, he sent Jesus to die for us uh, so that he could redeem us back to himself and bring us back to the place that we were in Adam. And so if you want to know why the devil hates people and why he's jealous of you is because we were made in the image and in the likeness of God. They were not. The fallen angels, uh, if you look here in scripture, um, they're called ministering spirits. They're called ministering spirits. Um, uh, that you know that they they're in service to us, okay? They're not. They weren't. They, we, you got people serving false deities and false. They're just worshiping fallen angels. They were made lower than us. Now we have become lower in our sin, but in Christ you're redeemed back to where you were in the garden, as evidenced by the fact that He wore that crown of thorns, okay? But let me show you here, Philippians two five, because I'm I'm almost done with time. I'm almost out of time. Let me show you. Remember in, in Genesis chapter one, when I showed you, where God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let means do not forbid. 
do not forbid man to be made in our image and in our likeness. Let me tell you, the definition of words means something. It has power. You you want to you want to get a dictionary, become very friendly with a dictionary. Because when you understand the context of a word like let, let means do not forbid. When he said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness, that means man can be made in his image and in his likeness. If he would have said man cannot be made in our image and our likeness, Jesus could not have come in the flesh. God could not have come in the flesh. Okay. All right. And so right here in Philippians chapter two, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. All right. Now I'm going to. So the show, this show is called Manifesting the Mind of Christ. If you look at the things that Jesus did, they came out of his nature, which was central to his mind, his way of thinking, relating and seeing. We have been given the opportunity in him to be redeemed back to the place where we can think and act like him in his power and in his authority. And so the goal of 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 Jesus, one of the goals that he had was for us to walk in his power and authority doing the same things he did. But for you to do that, you got to have that same mind. OK, now that is a whole other discussion. But they go together. They go together. When you have the mind of Christ, you can be like him. And God doesn't say you can't. He actually wants you to be. The closer you get to being like him, the more holy and righteous you are. And that's why you need to guard your mind. Now, um, OK, so I'm at the end of my time for today. But um, I just want to let you know that tonight I have a webinar that I'm doing, you know, with these shows and, and, and just everything I have. I can only do so much. But I've got some really good revelation for you that that God has given me to share with you. And so uh, if you can uh, go ahead and go to um, on, on my website, ApostleDwayne.com sometime today. It's not up yet. I apologize. Uh, I'm working on this stuff, but uh, so you can get signed up for that webinar. That webinar is going to be ready for you to to log on to at least to reserve a seat this morning. You'll be some you'll be the first people ever to have gone through this training that I have for you and uh, and to see the information. And so I've got some really good stuff for you and you'll get that on ApostleDwayne.com. Uh, now, that being said, I hope this uh, message ministered to, ministered to you. Take everything to Scripture, no matter who says it. And uh, and the Father, he'll make sure that uh, you know what is right if your heart is open and you're humble. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and sign out. This is Apostle Dwayne.